black women, women of color, we all fall in the same category. And I think we really don't realize that. I basically did not draw the map to Black Women Roundtable, but I am following the lead of legends like Helen Butler in Georgia with the People Agenda, and she's over the Georgia Black Women's Roundtable. So it's not a Sheila Tyson's idea. I am just a convener for you. So we cover 40 counties in the state of Alabama. Wow. Where we have Black Women Round Table set up all over the state. Let's give Black Women Round Table. <laughs> Our job is to go into black and brown underserved neighborhoods, communities, buildings, companies, government. It don't matter. We cover from the top to the bottom. We encourage. We educate, we motivate, and we mobilize people in that community that falls up under that category. We even have Republicans, whether you believe it or not, because we are a nonpartisan organization. We have to serve everyone the same. If the need is there, we have to serve. When I pull these girls, they go through a application process where they're interviewed. They're interviewed by their peers, their teachers, and their principals. Dr. Hall, she is our lead to go into the high schools and recruit. With our college uh, students, we have, what, Emily, what's, the, what's her name again? I cannot remember. Who? Camille Goodman. And I, and I just talked to Camille, y'all, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, she recruit out of all 13 of our HBCUs. So we're just, because you don't see us on billboards and you don't see people walk around with our t-shirts on, we can't afford it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because we're thinking our money into our girls' minds, yeah. heart, and soul. Yeah. Because we need to get some work done. Right. We ain't got time for the, I keep trying to tell you. You can't serve with lipstick and red bottoms and an expensive pocketbook when you're dealing with a black and brown community. Amen. You gotta get down and get lit, okay? That's right. So that's what we do, and we also provide scholarships. Uh, we, we have students that can't go any further because they have to pay their tuition up in order to sign up for their classes. We fill in the gap for that. Thank you. We, the children, the young, the young people travel they don't all the way, they don't all t uh, every time have a chaperone. Because I'm not, I, I sometimes I don't be wanting to go, majority of the him to say 99% of the time I don't want to go. <laughs> but we do have uh, chaperones that are uh, material, stand up. She's one of our chaperones that are retired teachers. <laughs> so we have Paulette, stand up. Paulette is, a, is over the foot soldier's office. She's one of our chaperones. So we do have people that actually chaperone our young people when they go out of the country, out of the state and out of the country. So all they have to do is just come to the meetings and participate within the program, and that's how the lottery is drawn, and that's how we determine who actually gets a chance to go out of the state and out of the country. And believe me, they are well educated. When they go, they, they, they have to come back and do a book report. They have to give it to their principal and to the superintendent. So they are just not going out lot of gagging because we don't have that type of money and we don't have that type of effort. Every effort we have is an on the ground grassroots effort. And it's so important that when we're at the table, we make good decisions. So I'm going to turn it back over and let her complete this. And thank you so much for Black Youth Folks.